Hello everybody, I am Ms. Speltz and you're watching the Rex Elementary channel. This is going to be kindergarten social studies lesson um, number six, I think. And I gotta say, I'm a little bit bummed because today we're going to learn about our last amazing lady. Now, there are lots of amazing ladies out there. But today we're going to talk about the last one that we are going to learn about. But you are always welcome to go and look into this more on your own if you would like to. But first, let's review what a historical figure is and talk about what kind of historical figure we are going to learn about today. All right, remember this is historical figure. These people are, they fight for something they believe in. They try to fix things that are unfair. What are they called? Activists, that's right. What about these people? They work in the government or for the government or sometimes against the government. But they are, think, political leaders. Good job. All right, let's look at this last one. We talked about this kind of person. They can make books. They can make art. They could be dancers. What are they called? Think. Artists. They are artists. And today we're going to learn about this kind of historical figure. Hmm. Let's see. I see new inventions. I see this is supposed to be the Brooklyn Bridge, which was a pretty Im impressive engineering feat at the time. Let's see. And I see a person holding a flask. This is an Erlenmeyer flask. It's what people who do chemistry use. Let's see, I'm going to write the first letter. Do you know now? They are scientists. They are scientists. They are people who discover new things build new things, um, and invent new things, which is all super duper exciting. And the person that we're going to learn about today is a scientist. And I am so excited to uh, meet her. So let's head on over. Oh my goodness, it's black and white again, except for that this person did not live at the same time as Eleanor Roosevelt and as Zora Neale Hurston. She actually lived way before them. She was around for a little bit at the same time, but not when she was doing most of her important things. I'm going to give you a few hints and I want to see if you can figure out who I'm talking about. All right. She was a scientist. More specifically, she was a chemist. That's someone who works with chemicals and physicist. That's someone who studies physics or um, like the forces in our world, like gravity and push and pull and inertia and all that good stuff. She won not just one, but two Nobel Prizes. Hmm. And she moved to France because she was not allowed to go to school in Poland. Do you know who this person might be? Hmm? Hmm? That's right. It is Marie Curie. But Marie Curie was actually the name um, that people in France called her. But if you are in France, which is this person was, they actually changed her name to sound more French. I'm going to look at my cards for this one because um, I don't speak Polish and I'm going to need a little bit of help um, pronouncing her name. So Maria Slogowska was born in 1867 in Warsaw. Poland. Both of her parents were teachers with her father actually being a science teacher, specifically, I believe also in chemistry. Now, Maria was really very, very smart, but she was also pretty disappointed because when she grew up in a family full of teachers and she valued her education and she thought science was super interesting, but in Poland, they had rules against girls going to college and that didn't seem very fair to her. So her sister and her actually made a pact. Her sister went on to 
medical school in Paris and Maria gave her money to help her get all the way over to Paris and pay for her tuition. And then a few years later, they switched. So Maria's sister stayed in Paris, lived in Paris, got married in Paris, and she sent Maria money so she could come on over and join her in Paris. And so that is where Maria moved. She went to their Sorbonne, which is a very famous college in Paris and Paris, France. And she moved there in 1891. While in Paris, she met her soon to be husband, Pierre. He was another scientist who studied um, the same things that Maria studied. In fact, one of their Nobel, one of her Nobel prizes, they actually won um, for, they both won it for a project that they worked on to Together. And they fell in love with their scientific hearts and their bike riding and their long walks. And so they got married in 1895. Marie Curie is most famous for the work that she did in um, studying radioactive chemicals. In fact, she is the reason that we call these chemicals radioactive. And in 1898, yeah. In 1898, her and her husband discovered two um, brand new elements. Elements are one of the smallest measures that we have in science. It's used mostly in chemistry, but also in physics and some other um, scientific studies. And she discovered two new elements, and they're both radioactive. They were named radium which is where we get the term radioactive from. And the other element was called polonium, which she named after her home country of Poland. Because of her amazing works with these radioactive chemicals, she won two Nobel Prizes. The first was in 1903, and that is the one that she won with her husband, and the other one was in 1911. The first one in 1903 was for physics, and the one in 1911 was for her studies in chemistry. She was the first person to win two Nobel Prizes, and she is to this day the only person that has won two Nobel Prizes for different things. She has one for chemistry and one for physics. If anyone is um, talented enough to win two Nobel Prizes, they usually win it for the same thing, so they might get two Nobel Prizes for Physics, two Nobel Prizes for Literature. So it's very um, impressive and remarkable that she was so smart that she was able to win two Nobel Prizes in two different scientific disciplines. Later in World War I, um, she was attempting to donate to the cause um, for France during World War I. And her first thought was to try to give the French government her Nobel Prizes, which are made of gold, so that they could melt them down for money. But the French government refused to take them. Um, so instead, she decided that she was going to help use her scientific knowledge to help in the medical field and help the wounded soldiers as much as she could. So she actually created these mobile x-ray centers which were called petit curies or little curries. And that way the doctors who were on the battlefields or just behind the front lines could take x-rays of soldiers' arms or legs or whatever was broken um, so that they would know better how to help them and how to fix it. And what was great about them is that instead of being um, stuck in just one wing of a hospital, they were mobile, which means that as the war progressed and as um, battle lines moved and as the soldiers moved to different places, the um, x-ray tent kind of things could go with them. Now Marie Curie spent her entire life working with radioactive chemicals. We now know that radioactive um, elements, really is what they are, are very dangerous and they can make people very, very sick, um, especially if you work with them for a long period of time. Um, Marie Curie and the people back then didn't know that. And so what happened is she spent her entire life studying these incredibly dangerous um, chemical elements. And it, over time, it, it slowly made her very, very sick. The work with um, these radioactive materials eventually 
led to her death in 1934. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all of that good stuff so that um, you know when our next Rex Elementary video is coming out. For, for your assignment, please submit a video on Dojo Portfolio of you telling your teacher what Murray Curry studied in her science and if you were going to be a scientist, what kind of science do you want to study? Please have a wonderful rest of your day. There's also, if you would like more information on Marie Curie, there is a link in the description box below bringing you to a kid article um, from PBS Kids that will uh, give you some even more information. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I will see you in the next lesson for your final women's history culminating task. Have a great day. Bye.